I feel like in January we all had big plans, all these lofty dreams, and then suddenly we blinked and it's the middle of the year. So be honest with me, do you still remember what those goals were that you had set in the beginning of the year? Do you still remember what your vision board looks like? I kind of don't, which is very, very concerning. Even though I've been doing these monthly planning sessions and setting all of these new targets for work, I haven't really thought about what my overarching intentions are for a little while and really take a step back to look at how it all aligns. So today I wanted to take you through my four step full mid-year review and check-in so that we can really get back on track on our goals, fitness, health, and just overall life. I've taken a lot of the strategies that I've learned in my seven years of working in marketing, specifically as a marketing director in tech and from all of the productivity, wellness, self-help books that I read. And we're going to be getting a little bit of help from Copilot in Words, so let's dive into it. Step one of the four step plan is pretty obvious. We need to first review our 2025 goals, our vision board, and any other planning docs that we had made at the beginning of the year. This is a time to really get honest with ourselves about whether we have been living in a way that is aligned with what we said we were going to do at the beginning of the year. I typed every Everything up into a Word document so that I can kind of have it all in one place. But for me, my 2025 intentions, my manifesto says to one, keep learning to slow down. That was a theme that I had really wanted to carry into 2025 that I kind of started in 2024. Number two was to live more fully. Number three was to learn to focus on the 20%, aka the 20% that produces the 80% of the results. I did have moved to Italy as number four, which has been in my plans for a really long time, but that plan has not completely changed. It's just been edited slightly to suit my career and timeline. So we'll talk about that maybe in another video. Number five, I have read more. Number six, I have balance out consumption with creation. I also have stuff like properly address my skin issues, learn to actually eat healthy, be realistic about my finances, and to write more. From that manifesto, I also set some goals for myself. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that I am an avid journaler. So some journaling prompts that I kind of used as I was reviewing these goals were, what did I say I wanted this year to look like or feel like? Which goals still feel aligned? Do any feel outdated and no longer like something I want to achieve or care about? Where did I actually make real progress? And then where did I stall? Thinking about these questions as you are reviewing your 2025 goals really just helps to kind of straighten out your mindset and make sure that what you had set out to do at the beginning of the year still aligns with with who you are today because a lot can happen in six, seven months. You can change as a person, your goals could change. So as much as this is a reminder of what those goals are, it's also a great time for you to decide whether those goals still apply. So step two is to audit your current time and energy. I always start my life audits by doing the wheel of life exercise. I just find that it really gives you a clear look at what areas you are feeling satisfied with and what areas you need to focus on more. So you essentially have to build a table that include the categories of mind, body, soul, career, finance, purpose, and then friends, family, and romance. If you're using Word, you can get Copilot to build this out for you. So I just click the little inline button and then use a prompt like, help me create a table for a wheel of life exercise. This table should include these categories, a space for me to set a rating, and then a space for me to leave any other notes that I might have. As you're going through each category, you wanna evaluate how satisfied and content you are with those specific life areas and then give it a rating out of 10. 10 being you are fully, completely satisfied with how everything is going and then zero being you're not at all. Just like with the last section, I would highly recommend doing some journaling on these ratings of these areas as well, just so you can have that deeper understanding of how you're actually feeling. Some questions that I like to use are, what's going on in my life right now that's preventing me from working on these specific areas or the areas that need work? And then of course, what's been working well and what needs to shift? But if you want more journaling prompts, you can actually get Copilot to think of some for you. So I like to go to the little co-pilot button at the top of the page and then just ask it, hey, can you help me think of 
10 or 20 or 30 even journaling prompts that get me to think more deeply about these different areas of my life and my contentment rating. Step three of our four step plan is to realign and reset. So you have reviewed all of your goals. You have evaluated how you're actually feeling and how your life is going at this very moment. So looking at those goals, looking at those ratings, is there anything that we need to change? So we're thinking about stuff like, are the timelines still realistic? Are these goals still aligned? Do these goals actually help me reach my greater purpose or greater goal? What I like to do is just start a new section on my document and then copy my original goals into the section and start rewriting them based on my assessment. So as I'm going through each and every goal, I'm keeping in mind the areas of my life that I feel the least satisfied with or the most satisfied with and seeing how that impacts that goal. So for me personally, my refresh goals look like having a balanced workout plan. So now that I kind of have a good idea on how to create a fitness plan that works for me, I want to make sure that I am including one running day, one Pilates day, one yoga day, and one weight training day. I'm still keeping my read 50 books goal. I would love to accomplish that. And then I kind of broke that down so that I just have to read 12 and a half books every quarter, which feels a lot more accomplishable. Then for my business, I just have plan out my business spending for the rest of the year because I do need to spend money in order to grow my business, but I just want to make sure that I'm being strategic with it. So that will include any contractor work, paying myself out, as well as any like expected subscriptions that I might need. As far as my diet and my health goes, I rewrote the goal to say, focus on eating out max once a week. I'm already doing this really, really well, but then there will be some weeks where I just feel tempted to eat out more. And so if I just give myself that allowance of eating out just once a week, it still allows me to go out and have yummy food that I might be craving, but having that focus be shifted towards making sure that I am cooking at home for every other day. And so for when I'm cooking at home, I wanna make sure that I'm having low carb diet, using healthy and protein rich recipes, and then meal prepping. That is a huge thing for me as somebody who does get quite busy every once in a while. And I just wanna make sure that I'm never left to have that moment of desperation where I need to order Uber Eats. For my language learning, I realized that it was really unrealistic for me to learn both French and Italian, especially at the same time, and especially at the level that I am at. So I dropped learning French for now. I'm gonna focus on learning Italian, and I'm just going to focus on taking one Italian class per week. The goal that I did end up adding for myself was to meditate once a day. It's something that I was doing at the beginning of the year. It kind of fell off, and then I never reprioritized it into my goals and my schedule, but that is something that's really gonna help that mind and that soul rating that's been a little bit low lately. And I just think it's going to help with my overall like productivity and success as well. As you're rewriting your goals, it's a good idea to also add in some key results as well. So like, what does it look like if you are accomplishing those goals step by step? So for example, read 50 books by the end of the year, it's gonna look like reading 12 and a half books every quarter. Adding these key results will just make the goals not only feel more easy to accomplish because you're kind of breaking it down into like smaller key results, but it's a really great way for you to start tracking your progress as well. The last step of our four step mid-year check-in game plan is to create a system that allows you to not only review and stay on track with the goals but actually accomplish the goals by the end of the year taking all of our rewritten goals we're going to ask copilot to actually help us create a five month game plan in which each and every week we are actually taking those small steps that are necessary to help us reach those goals by the end of the five months aka by the end of the year so what i'll do is i'll actually go in and just highlight highlight all of the rewritten goals that we have and then click the little inline co-pilot icon. Then we can use a prompt like, help me create a five month plan for these goals. I wanna focus on smaller steps weekly that actually help me achieve these goals. And I also wanna ensure that by the end of month five, I've accomplished these goals. Okay, what co-pilot gave me looks really, really good so far. I like that in month one, it actually broke it down into weeks. So in the little edit box that you have underneath, I'm gonna just write this looks great. Break down months two to five into weekly goals as well. Honestly, this looks amazing. It would have taken me so long to actually type all of this out. So this was super, super helpful. I like that it kind of gave every month a theme as well. So month one is all about laying the foundation. Month two is about building consistency. Month three is about expanding those
those efforts. Month four, deepening that commitment. And then by month five, we have mastery and achievement. Something else that I find really helpful is to make sure that you are checking in with yourself. So as you're going through these smaller steps, these weeks, these key results, and these goals, it's important to continue to ask yourself like, okay, do I still feel aligned with this? Does this feel like it's actually adding to my life? Does it feel overly stressful or like just the right amount of stress that it's actually giving me motivation? Since I do all of my weekly planning on Sundays, I'm actually just going to ask Copala to help me create a template for me to check in with my goals as I'm doing that planning every Sunday. So for this, I'm going to click the little Copilot icon at the top of the page and then just messaging Copilot and telling him to help me create a weekly planning template that includes check-ins for each of my goals. Having a template like this is great because you can fill it out every single week at the same time and just make sure that not only are you checking in with your goals, but that the tasks that you set for yourself align with achieving those goals as well. As I've kind of done this and gone through this four-step plan myself, it really made me realize that I have changed since the beginning of the year and some of those goals have shifted to become something different. But also, instead of looking at your year or the next six months as this big thing that you need to achieve, things that you need to perfect, breaking it down into week by week steps has been the most helpful way for me to feel like, yeah, I can actually do it. And as long as I follow these weekly plans, I am going to achieve my goals at the end of the year. Seeing it broken down in this way not only helps me visualize what the next five months is gonna look like for me, but it also kind of gives me a little boost of like self-trust and confidence to know that as long as I follow the plan that I have created, I'm gonna achieve my goals. So I hope that if you've been feeling a little down, a little unsure about your goals for the year, that this was a helpful, actionable plan for you to actually check in and make sure that by the end of the year, you're gonna be the person that you wanna be. While you can type or write everything on your own, having Copilot in Word really did make this process feel a lot quicker and easier. So for your next goal setting, goal planning session, definitely make sure you check out Copilot in Word. I'll have it linked in the description box below. If you enjoy actionable videos like this and are somebody who likes to give yourself a little bit of a challenge, I think you really like this video that I published a while ago about creating a 90 day game plan to becoming the person that you want to be. But other than that, I hope this video found you at the right time and I hope that you are having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. I'll see you in the next video.